Oh, cup of tea. Cup of tea and strap yourselves in because this is a long one. Well, I don't know if it's long. I'm trying to make it as short as I possibly can. But I think it's important that I show you my homework. Just so people understand that when I come up with stupid ideas and and things on the boat, and I go through something called an estimate, which is a military planning tool. So I'm going to talk through the estimate process. Um, it's freely available online. I, I think, well, I do know for starters, if you're planning military operations, it's a lot more detailed, particularly question one. Situation and how does it affect me? Well, I have a 550 litre water tank. And if you go back to water tank, I think I did a video on it. It's kind of angled. It's not like a square box. It's angled to maximize the use of the space under the well deck and it butts up against the, um, the bow thruster tube. Those that have a thousand litre water tanks has probably got an integral water tank. Uh, and I think that their situation will be completely different to mine and everybody's situation is different. So you kind of need to walk in the footprints of someone who's living on the boat and understand how they live does depend on what the situation is and how does it how it affects you so i've got a 550 litre water tank 50 litres i can't use and that's because the pickup pipe from the pump sucking the water out or pumping the water out or whatever it, i don't know what it does whatever it does um there's the the bottom layer inch can't use because it the pickup doesn't go that far down therefore you don't get the sediment and all the rest of it if there is any i don't know um and that's by design so i've got 500 liters and that's it and i get water from water points which are dotted around the canals so question two is about mission analysis so identify the problems that you may well incur you're at a said point you need to go the next water points there how long do you want to stay in the gap well that does depend on water by and large um, and that will determine how much water i use so if i want to stay in a certain area let's say milton Keynes, big area milton Keynes, you can do it in a day because there's no locks but if you want to stay at certain points of milton Keynes, there's very few water points and um, that will determine how many showers you have how often you wash your clothes or how many times you turn the washing machine on because the washing machine takes 50 litres. A shower will take 10 to 12 litres, approximately, if you do a ship shower. Um, how quickly you allow water to come out the tap when you're washing your hands. How much water goes in the bowl when you want to wash up. All of that has an effect. Often I will determine, if I want to save water, what I cook, because if I've done steamed veg I can use that pan again and put some pasta in it and then I'll, I'll empty the pasta water and then put some noodles in it and then I'll do some more steamed veg all of that is on one pan and all I need to do is wash up plates and things those are the issues worst case scenario because you've got to go for worst case scenario let's say I have half a water tank and we get iced in so I do need to understand where the next water point is how i how, how i can get water and at the same time worst case scenario if i get locked in how i can make that water last a little bit longer and as those long-term viewers will understand that um a full water tank can last me about six weeks that's about 80 litres of water a week. Question three is about the validation of potential COAs, COA, COA, courses of action. Okay, and these are the so what's and what ifs. What if in the winter time I've got half a tank of water, the next water point is at least a mile away and um, I'm iced in? Well, I can have a 20 litre squashable plastic container and I can walk to the water point put the plastic container in my rucksack and then walk back and if I've got an empty tank or nearly or just under a quarter of a tank of, um, of water left that's 20 journeys 
How do I know that? Because I've done it. And I've walked a mile to the water point and walked a mile back five times in the morning, five times in the evening, and the same the following day. It gives me a supply of water. So that's Coa 1. Coa 2, well, Coa 2 could be situation no change, just cope with it. Coa 3, I, well, I could have bigger water containers, you know, the rolly ones that, that you can buy. Um, they take 40 to 50 litres, depending on which one you get. And I could get two of those. And I can push one and pull the other. Well, that's slightly difficult. But even if I got one, um, I could roll that, couldn't I? So, so buying more water containers is Coa 3. Coa 4 that needs in, you know, a little bit more depth, a little bit more knowledge, is um, investigate in a water filtration system. I've researched quite a lot of it online, um, but I haven't been able to talk to someone about it until last week, which I managed to do. Run the VT. Um, I'm on a ladies boat called, well the boat's not called Susanna, but the lady's called Susanna and she's got a water filtration system which I'm going to have a look at. Now as you know over the past couple of weeks that I have vlogged, discussed the thought of having a water filtration system and Susanna very kindly said to me, oh why don't you come and have a look on the boat? So I'm here and now we're going to have a look. Um, so this is it realistically is in there now what shocked me before I've even had a look on the inside is that's quite a big box and I don't think I've got that boxy type shape spare on the boat because the boat was designed and the trouble is when you design a boat you're using up every single minute little detail of space because space is important on a narrow boat um, Susanna has um, fitted this boat out largely by herself and she designed to have a water filtration system in there therefore she had a spare bit of room um, so yes there are places I could put it I could put this kit in the wardrobe but then what do I do with my clothes I there is something I might be able to do but I wanted to do my homework to start off with so without me waffling on let's have a look at the water filtration system so here's Susanna unpacking a filter, quite large I think. What is it Susanna? So this is a sediment filter, it's a one micron um, pleated sediment filter. So these pleats, that's where all the sediment collects. The idea is that you can then wash that and reuse it. So it lasts a bit longer than other types. Okay, and how long should it last? Well, I think with the water from the canal, I think I'm probably going to allow it to last about a month. Okay. But it depends. I mean, luckily you can see whether or not it, how dirty it is. So. And that goes? This goes. Ooh, there. Big... Can you get smaller versions of that? Well, you get two sizes. So you've got the 20 inch and the 10 inch. So that's, that's the smaller size. And for a lot of the filtration systems that I've seen that people have got on narrow boats, they're mainly built up out of the 10 inch. Yeah, yeah. And that would mean that it would take up a lot less space. Yeah, 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 okay, fair one. Um, I've basically gone into overkill. So I'm not saying that the filtration systems that you see aren't adequate. Um, I was just concerned to make sure that I'd kind of gone over the top, basically, I think. Okay. So that's the sediment, that's a sediment filter. But before that, so this is in a certain order. I've then got three other sediment filters, which gradually get smaller and smaller. So um, this is a 50 micron sediment filter. This is a five micron sediment filter and then I'm going to put another one micron sediment filter in here so in other words the water gets filtered through those and then there's yet another one micron sediment filter as well um, because there's a lot of sediment obviously in canal water 
And what filter is that? So this is a carbon filter. Um, this takes out all the heavy metals, um, all the chemicals basically from the canal water. And as you can see, this is quite a hefty one. It's big. And I've got two of those. Um, so that it goes through carbon filters twice. And again, that's really because I think there's quite a lot of heavy metals in canal water and chemicals and all sorts, you know, where people spill their oil, their diesel, all sorts into the water. So the idea is this will take those chemicals out. A big filter to remove nitrates and nitrites. So there's a lot of runoff from fields well, potentially there's a lot of runoff from fields into canal water of uh, fertilizer from fertilizer on farms and so a friend of mine who'd had a water filtration system installed got the water tested and what came back was that there were nitrites so this is to deal with that Hand tight or does it need to be? Um, pretty much hand tight. And they all need to be filled up with water? These all need to be filled up with water and yeah. So I've actually, in changing the filters, I've had to clean out these containers as well. Okay. Um, because they get quite mucky. I'm getting anywhere with this. Oh, I'm not very practiced at this. Is it because you've got one here, haven't you, as well? Yeah. Oh, is that's which one's this? No, this is number five, so it should go in that way. What I'm learning from this is the fact putting that thing in the hole and screwing it and holding it when it's full of water it's and it's fine. clearly quite heavy is a bit of a pain. Do you want a hand? Uh, well I'm going to have to yeah, I know, try but... and figure it out. Um... This is the UV filter and once all the sediment is out of the water then this will kill the uh, bacteria and viruses in the water. That's the idea behind it. And so that means there should be clean water then going into the water tank. Did you say you had some um, someone who's done some testing on that on this system as to how how clean that water is it was sent away to a laboratory for testing? Uh, yes yeah, so a friend of mine didn't have this system but she had another system and she did send it away for water testing and it came back that the water had nitrites and faecal matter um, and so what I have is uh, this system which has the additional nitrate nitrite filter and then I have an additional filter once the water comes out of the water tank before it reaches any of the taps it also goes through another sediment filter and a bone char filter which takes out any you know other heavy metals or chemicals of any sort and then another UV filter to kill the bacteria and viruses as well. Would you have any because you've got a double so you've got all this and you've got more filters under your sink, would you drink the water? Uh, that depends on the testing which I'm going to get done. Uh, at the moment I've got <laughs> another filtration system which is a Berkey water filter and I'm anticipating that the water, once it's gone through the Berkey water filtration system, will then be fit to drink. The water testing is very expensive, it's £250 per test, so I'm going to test that water because I'm reasonably confident that will be okay. Um, that will then be my drinking and cooking water. That's come from the boat, but you've put it through that Berkey system. Mm -hmm. So what's left with this? Because we put all these on, and to be honest, those bigger filters at the back, they're a little bit of a pain. One I, I just put on straight away. 
and I thought I'll, I'll teach you Susanna how to do it couldn't do the last one so it, it is about getting used to the system and understanding it um, it's so much easier doing the smaller 10 litre thingy jobbies uh, as, as opposed to the back 20 litre thingy jobbies and um, you also you can't allow your water tank to run dry because you need to fill those containers up otherwise the pump won't pump okay so those those are the issues that you've got um, other than the size other than um, where to put them other than logistics which I'll talk about later and actually filling the things up you, this is now good for water for how long well um the other issue that i've also come across is that if you you have to use the system regularly so these filtration systems are designed to be run continuously and so most people who'd run a filtration system would be running that f continuously obviously for us boaters we're basically you're running it to fill up the water tank i mean this is not set up to run continuously and what i found is that the water that remains in the filtration system between using it um, becomes uh, anaerobic and starts to smell and so actually you have to use it regularly in order to flush through that water and so everyone says that when you start running the filtration system any filtration system and um, that you need to run it for 10 minutes I've found I've had to run it for 40 minutes before the water stops smelling so I think that probably I haven't had enough experience of this yet I think that probably has to do with how dirty the filters are um, but I've and how often I use it um, but I think it's also something where I might find that I have to actually empty the water out of all the filters um, after I've finished using it and then filling them up again and re-screwing them on again each time I do use it I'm going to see how that works uh, and clearly there there are some teething issues clearly there are some issues that you need to be aware of and i think if you've got a family um susanna lives on her own like i do um and and clearly you know even if you shower every day you don't use too much water but i think this gives you the capability if you've got a family well everybody can have a shower the kids can jump in the shower you're not sharing showers although that might be quite good you can have as many showers as you like you can instead of washing up in in a you know inch of water you can fill the sink you can shower every day you can have i could have a shave every day all that stuff that you take for granted you could do that you could almost you'd almost if you have this system need to fill your water tank every day I would suggest that would be a good thing and Susanna's not in her head but of course the impact of that is you're using battery power to run this you know to run the pump so maybe get yourself a um, generator which I spoke about last week I'm getting the air out of the system because what I found is that without that the pump won't always run and so this is just filling it up with water to make sure that the system is of water by pushing the red buttons pushing the red buttons lets the air out and this uh, Heath Robinson system basically fills up fills the system up with water if there's filling up the air gaps so that's the uh, idea. filter thingy on the end there and that goes on there and this so now what I'm going to do is turn the UV filter on, which is a 240 volt. Going to turn the inverter on, and then I assume the pump's going to start pumping. I'm holding this hosey thing because whilst the one hose is in the canal, it needs to test the water through and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, let's see what happens. I'm going to turn the pump on now. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, we're getting it. Are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can put the the power hose on by putting your finger on the end. So there's a bit of pressure there if you wanted to wash your boat. So um, there we go. Water filtration system 
it works. And like I said earlier on, if you've got a family, then great. If you're on your own, try and use, have as many showers as you can per day, morning and night, and do some washing up. Run the washing machine uh, so you can do this daily. Discuss. I'm quite pleased that I've got this system because it's meant that I've had to learn about how the whole thing works. It's been a nightmare on one level because I've been relying on the system and then it hasn't worked and I haven't known why. But also, but what it's really meant is that I can see where the filters get dirty, I can see where the water smells and, you know, I can see that's not right. If the water was just automatically going into the water tank, I wouldn't know that. So I'm relieved that I do know that and then I can start to deal with those problems. So overall, now it's working, or I'm hoping it's working at any rate, I think it's working sufficiently. I'm quite happy that I've gone through this process. Now, having seen it, I am more happy with a water filtration system. Um, and the other bit that Susanna was talking about was this, what's it called, like a Burko boiler. A filter, Berkey. Berkey water filter. So that's the water filter that you drink out of. So you, you fill that up and that filters stuff. And I've heard about this. Someone else mentioned this Berkey system. I don't know who it was, but somebody else mentioned that. Um, and they're supposed to be very good. You can... I was going to say we in it. But apparently you can. I wouldn't. Um, but, you know, it's that, it's that good. And they cost... They cost quite a bit of money. They're 250, 300 quid or something like that. But if you wanted this system and you wanted to drink out of it, perhaps this Berkey system, as well as the water filtration system. And uh, Susanna's got some stuff under the sink, which is almost another couple of, a layer of, of or two layers, in fact, of, um, of water filtration. Now, I haven't got room for this on my boat. This is, suits your requirements and it suits your needs. And you've got a family on a boat and you want to take two showers a day and you want to use the washing machine daily, as I know if you've got kids, you do need to use it daily, then this is probably a good thing. How long will that take to fill up your water tank? Um, to fill my water tank up, my water tank's 450 litres or thereabouts, or no, 490. I guess I've never filled it up. I think it would probably take an hour at least. I fill up about a quarter and that takes about 20 minutes. And now, why don't you fill it up? Well, it's it because um, I need to use the filtration system regularly to flush oh, the water through. Makes sense, that. Makes sense. I can imagine if you were, as you were saying, if you're living with a family, then that you'd probably use that water more quickly. But I guess my water tank lasts me about a week and a half if I'm just not worrying about water. Depending, you know, but about a week and a half or so. Okay. Okay. Question four is development and validation of the coas. Now, it says in the notes here, to create detailed and workable coas that can be tested for likelihood of success. If I was to buy um, those rolly water containers, um, where would I put them? It's all right having them, but then you need to understand where you're gonna put them. And um, yes, I, I could probably fit one either side of the front doors on the well deck. Um, but they it will impinge on how far I can open the doors. Um, I would find room for them. Uh, do I get just the one? And if I get one, where would I put that? Does, does it does it matter which side of the boat it goes? Probably not. Um, the squashy uh, twenty litre container. Well, I've got one of those anyway. Um, have I got uh, a backpack that will service that? Yes, of course I have and I've used it before. Um, other things, if we wanted to go down the water filtration system, where do you get your filters from? L I've learnt this from, um, what do they call themselves, HelloFresh. They couldn't deliver, and I feel that unless you're on a mooring, that you have a postcode, um, delivery of those type of items is a little bit difficult. It will be good if you have a filtration system to have three sets of filters 
so you get one inside the um, it, the filter thing is and then you've got two in reserve so you've got plenty of time to get that if you've got a system in place and you're reliant on other people other people don't really care whatever happens you know you're you're just totally reliant on them and and for something as simple as water and the other thing for me is when it comes to that type of thing if i had a filter in system it's only as good as the time it's been tested and at 250 pounds a test how do you know when any of those filters have stopped playing i think i've drunk some canal water at one stage it didn't do me any good i don't get poorly i can count how many times i've vomited you know not not how many times full stop but you know how many sessions of, of illness for that I can remember in my life full stop I don't get ill but by good this this night I was almost the point of collapsing I th I put it down to drinking canal water I don't know how I did it what well, I do but um, it didn't do me any good it was a very unpleasant experience I don't want to go through that again and if I'm putting more filters in quicker than it needs to be then that hasn't in incurred the cost of, of running that system. If I'm ever too old to not continuously cruise then I'll be in a marina and if you're in a marina then you've got water on tap and then there's no requirement for a system. Uh, and also you know, where am I going to put it at the moment there's, there's no room on the boat I'd have to find that room so all those the validation and and the the nub of where you're going to put this water filtration system well things things to consider question five is courses of action evaluation the notes say um to present sufficient detail to the commander to allow him to select the winning concept i think i've done the homework in question four question six commander's decision um, what have I decided? Um, I'm going to go with Coa 2, Gustin 3. So Coa 2 do nothing. Coa 1 I'm already doing because I've got a 20 litre squashable thing, um, water container. Um, question, or, or Coa 3 was to have the rolly things. So it's kind of a mix between one two and three one and two i'm doing already three is preferred course of action because it's cheaper than a water filtration system i do move about it's not as if i just stay in one area uh for long periods of time um i do move about and there's generally only me on the boat if there was more than me i would have to reconsider I've got a subscriber who sent me a whole load of gumph on water filters, filtration systems. Why did he send me that? Well, thank you very much for sending me it in the first place because he used to own a water filtration system. He's lived through that process and gave me the pitfalls. Um, all that is said, I'm not knocking anyone who's got a water filtration system or any company that delivers or, or whatever but I think for right now it's all about how I live and how I want to um, use the boat. One thing I have identified is I need to use my water properly instead of scrimping and scraping which I've done for the past year, 14-15 months. I'm now going to maximise what water I have in the tank so I've used it up by the time I get to the next water point something I'm not very good at doing. I've got myself into a, a position where I want to save as much water as I can and I'm not enjoying the system, the boat in, because of it as much as perhaps I could do. I think that covers the water filtration system or the water full stop for narrow boaters. I hope it's been useful. The planning tool I use for literally everything I go through those six questions 
without thinking about them really. I just do it and I, I look for my, my different options and look for the coas and, and, and it's a detailed process. I did the same for the generator, I did the same for buying the boat. I do a cost analysis, I do a cost benefits analysis, there's all sorts of stuff I do. It's just in my head and it's, is it indoctrinated? Well, of course it is. Do I need to get rid of it? Of course not, it's good. Don't, don't often make silly decisions. Thanks for watching, thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing for those of you that have. If you haven't subscribed, give it a go, it's free because I talk about all sorts of stuff to do with narrow boaty type stuff and living on a narrow boat without the sensationalism that other people seem to have. They seem to get things wrong all the time. I don't know why they do that. Um, so there we go. Until next time, ciao papa.